this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Majora's Mask! Let's take on the power of Majora's Mask itself. But if you've given all of your non-transformation masks to the various moon children around here, we get the Fierce Deities Mask, which makes the final battle a complete pushover. And it also gives you the 63rd and final entry into the Bomber's Notebook there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this without the Fierce Deities Mask first. And then I'll show you the fight with that power. But uh, yeah, let's get it on. Seems awfully cordial. But all right, let's see. Before moving forward, let's uh, restock on some arrows. And I need to get some stuff ready to go. Let's get our, yeah, the Zora mask going there. I need, let's see, regular arrows and light arrows. I'm going to need either of them for different situations. And the Great Fairy Sword. The thing is, with regular arrows, they're a lot fa they, Well, maybe not a lot faster, but they seem like they're faster than, like, magic arrows. And there will be times when I need them to be really fast. I like how they use the final hours theme in the... Wherever we are, the middle of the moon chamber, some sorts. I think that's the four remains. Uh, yeah, the four remains of the bosses we defeated there. And I guess Majora's Mask taps into their power or something. For final boss time against Majora's Mask. Okay, first thing we need to do, get into uh, Zora form there. And to stun Majora's Mask, I need to hit it with the boomerangs. For some reason, arrows don't do that. Even though it's a projectile, just the same. Get down here! There you go! Usually that's not that hard to hit with a target lock. But anyway, yeah, stun it, hit it with a light arrow, put on your mask again, target lock, throw the boomerangs, take off the mask, hit it with a light arrow there, put on the mask again. So you just keep on going back and forth like this. And now these remains are going to be flying around the room, they'll shoot projectiles at you, and otherwise get in your way. Sometimes they can block your shot, too. So you want to watch out for that. And, okay, yeah. Hit it with a light arrow. Got it barely on time there. And, yeah, you also want to be careful not to uh, target or lock on target to the other masks as well. Okay, get our Zora's mask. Oh, I mean, I knew that was over. Well, that was an easy final boss, even without the Fierce Duties mask. What the? So, you're growing appendages or torso or something? Kind of strange for a final boss theme, but okay. Let's see. Okay, I got a lock on Majora's Incarnation. Yeah, because Majora's Incarnation moves around so quickly, I have to use regular arrows to stun it. Oop. I meant to get out the Great Fairy Sword, but I'll do what I can. So yeah, stun. Oop. Oh, it's like, do I even have the Great Fairy Sword open? So, all right, pretty good. Fairly clean, first two phases of the fight. And then the third phase is where things get a little dicey. For real final boss time against Majora's Wrath. Okay, first I want to stun uh, Majora's Wrath. Or, yeah, Majora's Wrath with an arrow. And then charge in there if I can. If I can ever stop taking hits. Can I play the game? Okay, stun. Okay, stun with the arrows. Nope. What you can do, if I can do this kind of like Adawa there with the stun lock, but uh, I don't know how I stunned Majora's Wrath already, but we'll uh, go with that. Okay, so let's see. Get an arrow, stun, 
Lock on target. Jump attack. Hmm. Yeah, the timing on this one seems to be quite a bit trickier than Odawa was with the stun lock there. And by the way, Majora's Wrath is pretty much identical between the two versions of the game, oddly enough. Yeah, they don't make uh, Majora's Wrath out have, like, some eyeball pop out of it. I'm not exactly sure how I broke free of the tentacle there. Okay, come on. Get a shot. You could also deflect these spinning things into Majora's Wrath. But, uh, what is it? It's just easier to shoot it with arrows. And we got it. All right. Yeah, third flip phase was a little sloppy there, but we did what we could. That, that is it. That's all for the fight. So, let's see how this would go in the... with, with the Fierce Deities mask. Okay, we're back. This time, let's put the Fierce Deities mask to use here. I like the look of the mask. And it makes you, I guess, Adult Link or something. I mean, they they have the assets from Ocarina, so just uh, change the color of your clothes, remove his the pupils of his eyes, and you've got a kick-ass Adult Link form. For final boss time! Now, one thing about the sword that we've got is that it can shoot projectiles and pierce Majora's Mask. So, yeah, just uh, shoot that, then go with another hit. Oh, wow, that, that deals a lot more damage, too, to get into the next phase, huh? So, you don't need anything other than the mask and not getting hit. There we go. So are you going to get up? There you go. Yeah, you can just practically stun lock the mask there. Don't even have to worry about the others, practically. Why do you have spikes on you now anyway, like on the mask? I don't know. Well, that's one way of putting it. But, uh, oh, <laughs> I guess the shots... What is it? From the previous phase, what is it? Still, uh, we're in midair before this one started. I don't know if jumping attack deals more damage, but in any case, you got it. You, you could practically not put any thought into this all. At all, really. All you need to do is just put on the Fierce Deities mask, mash the B button, sooner or later you will hit Majora's Wrath, the real final boss time, and I mean, it would be slightly less efficient that way, unless they keep on dodging like that. There we go. And yeah, I'm just not very good at the stun lock here. It seems to be a lot more difficult than, uh, uh was it, with the Dawa. Okay, I'm going for the mash strategy. Yeah, if you get too close to Majora's Wrath in this phase, Majora's Wrath just starts jumping around everywhere. So you can't just, like, walk up to the guy without stunning it. Nah, nah, it doesn't work that way. But in any case, we got him! Hooray! So are we going to go through, like, a time compression thing, or what? Ha-ha. Uh -huh. I was going to say, are you starting to grow some hair or something? I don't... What? So, there's not going to be any repercussions for a moon suddenly leaving our orbit? But whatever works. Well, the town is good. See, you guys were all worried for nothing. 
Get back to work, slackers. So, oh, okay. I heard, at least in the Nintendo 64 version of the game, there was a way to sort of glitch yourself into the the fourth day. And, like, you could explore and do stuff. Not really sure how that works, because I didn't research that very much. That reminds me of another thing, also, with, uh, what was it? With the Fierce Deities mask, I think you can use it to fight the bosses at their temples after you beat the game. Some people were asking it if I'll show that off. Uh, I'll think about it. No. Well, they seem to talk about you. But, uh... Hmm? Did you just fart? Oh. Even after all the horrible things you did? What a lovely singing voice you guys have. Is she, are you freaking out or crying? Or both? Probably both. So yeah, I think, uh, what is it? Fierce Deities Mask can't be used outside of, well, the final battle there or the boss chambers. So it has a little less of a limitation in the, what is it? Than the Giant's Mask, but still. Yeah, I was kind of there. And now they're going to leave you all alone again. Uh, you just tried to destroy the world, dude. With nuclear fire. Well, just... Hmm? Oh, I thought this was... An alternate dimension or something. Maybe the Skull Kid came here from... Our home world or something. Whatever the planet's called. I don't know if it has a name. Oh, hey! Oh, okay, well. It's gonna take you a while to get anywhere. Maybe he got all the masks that we gave to the moon children. What do you mean, return home? I don't even know how I got here, practically. Oh, okay. <laughs> so are you going to sell all those masks, or what? Well, yeah, that was the general idea. Not dying. Oh, did I get all my masks back? There's such a thing as bad happiness? Well, whatever works for you. And the draw distance crapped out. Oh, well. You have? So you guys gonna go back to forest or what? I thought the carnival already began. I don't have any other business. I did all the side quests. What more do you want? I do like how he has the mirror shield still in the cutscene there. Ah, uh, Are you crying now? As much as a winged light bulb can? I don't know. Hey! All right. Why are you shooting fireworks during the day? You can never see anything. How does it even work? But all right, let's watch the credits roll and take a look back on the adventure and review the game. For the graphics, I'd give them a 9 out of 10. Certainly top-notch on the 
Nintendo 64 with the cartridge limitations. Uh, the draw distance was the real major difference that I noticed with the four megabytes of RAM. Megabytes, not gigabytes. Mega. Even in the 3DS version, the motion seemed a bit smoother than Ocarina of Time. I think they upped the frame rate a little bit. But I like how we get to listen to the concert that they were all talking about before. Speaking of which, uh, for the music, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. This is, to me, this is where the Zelda series really took it to another level. I mean, don't get me wrong, the previous games had great music too, but I think they were more like fun, adventurous, and catchy tunes, and very little of it was something that, I don't know, evoked uh, an emotion from me, or the way the music in Majora's Mask did. The boss theme was kick-ass, and Final Hours theme was really sad, especially during the Anjuan Cafe side quest, and it, it just really made the game so much more immersive to me. And for the plot, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by this, but, uh, because, like, the main protagonist has no character development, as always, and the main antagonist had very little presence after the intro and before the end of the game. Like how they got, like, the Deku horns playing this part of the theme there. Nice touch. But let's see. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. What I loved about the plot of the game was all the side quests and un otherwise unimportant NPCs. I mean, prior to Majora's Mask, I didn't really care much about very many NPCs. Like the dancers here, and I guess they're putting on their own, I don't know if you'd call it a concert still, but whatever it is, ballet. But, uh, yeah, anyway. But yeah, there, there really wasn't, I mean, like, prior to Majora's Mask, I didn't really care that much about very many NPCs in the games. I mean, there wasn't, like, a ton of background, culture, or lore. I mean, perhaps somewhat due to the memory limitations of the time. But, I mean, this really took it to another level for the series, uh, creating a whole world to explore, and learning about the different cultures and important NPC development and the struggles that people had to deal with. Uh, I only give Majora's Mask a little knock for having so little villain presence, but the rest of the game was more than made up for it. It was nice to do something other than stop Ganon again for a change. For the gameplay mechanics, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. I mean, in, a, in either version, it just felt like it was a much more subtle but apparent change to the mechanics compared to Ocarina of Time. Uh, the controls not only looked... Or, the, the, or what is it? Yeah, the controls not only looked smoother, but they felt smoother to me, too. I feel like I had an easier time controlling Link and doing whatever I wanted, as though they changed the sensitivity of the analog controls to be more precise when I had to, but the gyroscope also really helped the 3DS version a lot, too. And even in performing speedrun tricks and stuff, they were just a lot easier for me to perform than Ocarina of Time. Maybe it's just recency bias, having more recent experience with Ocarina compared to Majora, maybe like subconsciously knowing the quirks of the game, or the game engine had, or whatever, I don't know. Ah, So, is Cafe back to normal now? Or maybe they showed that and I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, probably. Whatever. So overall, I'd give Majora's Mask a 10 out of 10. Definitely one of my favorite Zelda games, if not my number one favorite. It's, I mean, it's just so hard to choose from all the Zelda games that I've made into LPs. And at this point, that's all of the Zelda games that I have beaten before. I'm certainly interested in the rest of the series, most likely Wind Waker. 
Uh, between my brother and I, I think we own almost every Zelda game on a Nintendo console. Except for the DS games. I don't think either of us has those. But I'd probably like to play the rest of the series in the order of their release, but then consider remakes after beating them. The end! Is it? So I guess Link just retraced his steps or something, and... Well, there we are. Aww. So, do we get, like, a... Clear save file or something? Something like that. Because, I mean, I think we can just go back into the file, and, uh... We have the Fierce Deities mask. Or we could have even... More credits! Why not? Oh yeah, I was thinking about that uh, with the, the final boss there. Uh, yeah, there's really... If there is a difference in how the final battles go... Uh, what is it? Between versions of the game? I don't think it's b because of Majora being changed. I mean, the, what is it? Well, yeah, all the different forms of Majora's Mask. I mean, Majora's behavior seems to be identical. The only difference would be, like, uh, changes in the mechanics of Link, not the final boss there. Like, one thing, like, when I stunned the first form, with those Zora boomerangs, because arrows or even light arrows won't work on that. But when you throw the Zora boomerangs in the 3DS version, you have to wait for them to connect before taking off the Zora mask. So that way you've already got Majora stunned there. And then you can take it off. Because if you don't do that, if you take off the mask before the boomerangs hit, then you'll just... Uh, the boomerangs will disappear out of midair and they won't hit anything. But in the Nintendo 64 version, you can do that. Throw the boomerangs, take off the mask, start moving in on your target so that way you can do things a little faster in that version. The boomerangs don't disappear immediately upon removing the Zora mask there. Another thing you could have done on the second form there, once you've stunned Majora's incarnation there, you could put on the Goron mask, roll in really fast before Majora can recover, and do a ground pound there. And I don't know why, but it seems like... What is that? It seems like the Goron pound deals double hits for some reason. I don't know why. But that is another way you could do it if you, you're not like a 100% playthrough or file. But uh, yeah, sure, let's say. Why not? So yeah, I mean, you could just, uh, yeah, go in to your file. Yeah, let's check it out. I mean, you, I think you have the, what is that? The, well, the Fierce Deities Mask, of course. But you can't just use it anywhere. I guess just only in the... The boss chambers or something? Oh, right. I thought she was talking about, like, the the masks, right? I like how she says the first giant they released, which is technically true. It doesn't have to be the... What is it? The one at Woodfall Temple. You could go to, like, Snowhead Temple, release that giant first, and that one will teach you the Oath to Order. But, uh, yeah, we got access to the Fierce Deities Mask now. But as you can see, yeah, it doesn't work outside here. So, yeah, it just has a limitation there, just like the Giant's Mask had. So I hope you've enjoyed Let's Play Majora's Mask. I have some ideas for my next LP, but I haven't announced anything yet. Uh, I'll let you know in good time. Soon enough, viewers. Soon enough. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. And see you next Let's Play!